these references to Greek mythology, we're surprised the Greeks didn't reference a legend about the mythical Twilight ruler of books. You're about to watch Pony, and we're counting down our picks for the top 10 references to Greek mythology in My Little Pony. Oh, I know, I know! Typical cranky to leave out minor details like the fact that I'm, you know, a sea monster, right? For this list, we're looking at the creature's stories or little details in the background that are not only part of equestrian society, but are also a nod to Greek mythology. There are characters and references to other mythologies, but for this list, we're looking at Greek specifically. So creatures like the manticore or the cockatrice do not qualify. Sorry about that. Also, we have excluded pegasi and unicorns because those are too easy. I see it, but I don't believe it! Number 10, Hydras. A classic Greek monster you may have seen from the Disney movie Hercules, Hydras were only seen once in the show, but they are referenced all over the show. That mold stench is a magnet for predators. Tattle worms, hydras, rocks. They are giant serpent monsters with multiple heads and grow a new head if one is decapitated. The mere size of these creatures are enough to make any creature run in fear. And apparently you don't have to go far to find one of these. You can find one in Froggy Bottom Bog. So if you plan to visit there, you may want to reconsider. Number 9. Tartarus While it may not be possible to call this place Hell in a kid-friendly program, the show did find another name to call it. Otherwise known as the most heavily guarded prison in all of Equestria, Tartarus is where the worst of criminals serve their sentences for all eternity. Hey neighbor! Wanna be friends? In Greek mythology, Tartarus is the deep abyss that is used as a dungeon of torment and suffering for the wicked and as a prison for the titans. However, there is no torment here, unless your cage is next to Pinkie Pie for all eternity. All eternity! Number 8. The Golden Apple Tree if you're a folklore expert, you may have heard this reference in Season 1. During the episode The Best Night Ever, Spike was talking about all the fun things to do in Canterlot, since this was the first time they were all going as a group. Spike mentions that Applejack might appreciate a golden apple tree, which is referred to many times in Greek mythology. I gotta show Rarity the crown jewels and Applejack the princess's golden apple tree! Some stories have it be guarded by powerful maidens and even dragons. It was also accounted in Hercules' eleventh labor. Good thing this is My Little Pony, because in one of the stories, Hercules slays the dragon. Poor Spiky Wakey. I'm so scared. Oh. Number 7. Aramaspi. Better known as the Cyclops, this giant was told in the story from Grandpa Gruff, who had attacked the king of the Griffins and stole the idol of Boreas. That's when Aramaspi came to steal our Griffin treasure. King Guto tried to fight him off. There were a few alterations from the original creature. Because this was a human free world, the Cyclops was altered from human to being goat like. And its name, Aramaspi, comes from a race of one eyed people in Greek mythology. From what we saw, there was only one in Equestria, and let's hope it stays that way. But Aramaspi managed to get away with the idol! Number 6. Cerberus. That's Cerberus! He's supposed to be guarding the gates of Tartarus! Great pronunciation, Twilight. Referring back to Tartarus, Cerberus is the loyal guard dog of Tartarus. Didn't do a very good job in keeping t locked in. We believe it happened when Cerberus left his post at the gates. Cerberus may seem tough and dangerous, but deep down he's just like any other dog. The show really gave Cerberus an accurate occupation to its origin. In Roman and Greek mythology, Cerberus guards the gates of Hades to keep the dead from escaping. His brother, the Orthros, even appears in the show. And the dogs are the best part of it after the ponies. Arr, dogs forever. Yes, you are. Number 5. Centaurs. Princess of Friendship here for a visit. What have I done to earn the honor of your company? 
For a show that is heavily based on horses, it's surprising to see centaurs only appear once. Lord Tirek was the main antagonist for season 4 and was one of the most powerful creatures ever shown. He also had to undergo a few alterations. Traditionally, centaurs are human-like in the upper torso, but his red skin and bull-like horns were excellent touches that made him seem very menacing. He also has a brother named Scorpan, who's a gargoyle, a creature of French mythology. <laughs> Number 4. Rarity's Wings We all know the story. When Rarity joins the Best Young Flyers competition, she flies too close to the sun and burns her wings. She falls down until Rainbow Dash saves her. What not too many people know is that this scenario is similar to the Greek tale of Icarus. Icarus and his father Daedalus attempt to escape from Crete with wings constructed from feathers and wax. His father told him not to fly too high or too low, but he did not listen and flew too close to the sun and melted his wings. History really does tend to repeat itself. Number 3. Minotaur Iron Will is rough, tough, and a business iron bull. Much as the name entails, Minotaur derives from the Greek word minos, meaning king, and tauros, meaning bull, which is probably why he has a staff of goats working for him. Another clever reference is when he held his first seminar in Ponyville. It was held in the middle of a hedge labyrinth. Dynamos, assertiveness seminar today, Hedge Maze Center. A nod to the stories when sacrifices were sent to a labyrinth to slay the Minotaur, but almost always was just a means to feed him. Good thing Iron Will only wants money. You were nothing but a doormat, and I will turn you into a lean, mean, assertive machine! I always thought that it was willingly given sacrifices because one kingdom had subjugated the other and they asked for young maidens and, and young virgin men. You're welcome to leave at any time! Number 2. Griffins and Hippogriffs We may have excluded Pegasi, but we can't exclude Griffins. They're too big of a fan favourite to exclude. Even when Gilda, the first Griffin, appeared, there was so much hype for more Griffins to appear on the show. So it came as a pleasant surprise when there was a Griffin Kingdom in the show, and many more started to appear. These majestic creatures date all the way back to ancient Persian and Greek folklore. Hippogriffs have also appeared in Greek myths and Latin poetic works. I know. Pretty sweet, right? You paid attention in class! What? If you ever tell any- Before the number one pick, let's take a quick look at a few honorable mentions. Also, before, we would like to give a quick shout out to this week's guest narrator. Hi there, I'm Scribbler, an audiobook reader, voice actor, and fanfic writer in the Pony fandom and beyond. I'm generally known for voicing best book horse Twilight Sparkle and other characters on my channel, where I host weekly full cast fanfic readings, creepypastas, daily comic dubs, and a monthly podcast where I and other fanfic readers review a chosen story and talk about random things like squirrels, puppies, and which superhero would win in a fight. Be lovely to each other! Number 1. Sirens While they made their biggest appearance in Rainbow Rocks, Sirens have been hypnotizing Equestria for a long time. While sirens are popular creatures in explorer and pirate stories, sirens come from Greek mythology. They're creatures who resemble human females with avian attributes, which explains why they were flying when fighting the ancient pillars. The whole no humans rule is also why they take their hippocampus-like form, which is also Greek. It's also no surprise that the sirens are also fan favorites in the fandom. It seems their siren song worked after all. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, now that you're under our spell. 
Do you agree with our list? Oh, I'm just about the most excited any Gryffindor has ever been about anything! What mythical throwback was your favourite? Let us know in the comments below. But for more top 10s posted every week, be sure to subscribe and check out watchpony.com for more. Thank you for watching, and again, a big thanks to our guest narrator, Scribbler Productions. Be sure to check her channel out, and you may now look away. This is awful! Sorry, it's odd that you asked me to read this particular script because Greek mythology actually is my hobby. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that it, it is. They, they sent young virginal women, and that was why it was the king's daughter went in.